March 22nd, I stand at the helm of the Digital Foundry Galley in pursuit of a distant vessel. As the sun sets and the storm clouds swirl above the increasingly violent ocean, we close the gap on this seemingly abandoned ship before unleashing fury upon its hull. As we begin our search for its captain on a nearby island, First Mate Alex calls for aid as the surviving captain emerges from a swirling sea in search of revenge. We face down our foe in a round of Bethesda-style combat, but ultimately plunge into Davy Jones' locker. Welcome to Sea of Thieves, a world of stories big and small, but perhaps none as significant as the tale of Rare itself and the journey to this point. It has been quite some time since the last proper Rare game after all, but the streak has finally ended and this week Rare has unleashed its long in development pirate simulator. Sea of Thieves also marks the first time Rare has adopted a third party engine for one of its marquee titles. In this case, Rare is using Unreal Engine 4 to bring its world to life. Today then, we're going to shine a lantern on the technology and art design responsible for this gorgeous game. It may feature a cartoony exterior, but Sea of Thieves is one of the most striking games we've played in recent years. We'll also take a look at performance on Xbox One and Xbox One X, talk about our experiences online, and more. So join us aboard the galley for a look at Sea of Thieves. From the moment you first begin your adventure, it's clear that Sea of Thieves has a lot to offer visually. With its vast oceans, gorgeous cloud simulation, and richly detailed islands, it's an unexpectedly attractive game. But before we jump into each element used to construct this world, let's begin with our customary look at image quality. After lacking support for Xbox One X in every beta test leading up to release, we were pleased to discover that the final game does indeed support Microsoft's latest machine by offering full native 4K rendering. Image quality throughout is top notch as a result. Now we can't show it here, but Sea of Thieves also offers one of the finest implementations of HDR we've seen to date. The contrast between light and dark areas is stronger than many other titles, and HDR genuinely contributes to its rich atmosphere. It's just a shame that HDR is only available on Xbox One. PC users are not given the option. As for the original Xbox One, or in this case Xbox One S, Sea of Thieves is a 1600 by 900 game, which leaves us with a rather blurry image in comparison to the X. Thankfully, all versions of the game share the same great underlying visual design. The world of Sea of Thieves is basically divided up into chunks. The sea, the sky, the islands, and the objects within them. So let's begin with a look at the ocean. A complex dynamic wave system has been engineered enabling a wide variety of conditions ranging from a calm clear ocean to powerful stormy waves. These waves are synchronized between individual systems too, allowing the simulation to line up between each player when playing online. The ocean exhibits proper foam simulation. While light refracts and reflects realistically off its surface, leading to a highly realistic but stylized design. As the sun sets, realistic specular highlights are visible across its surface, while light pierces cresting waves during certain times of day. The variation in color here is truly outstanding, and it never feels repetitive. This is all enhanced with VFX ranging from the spray of water against your ship while navigating during a storm to water caustics below the surface as you swim into the depths of the ocean. Reflections are another interesting thing. Rather than relying on screen space reflections like many other games today, which can exhibit flaws in large bodies such as this, Rare opted for what appear to be geometric reflections instead. Trees and other objects are modeled and appear with less detail when reflected in the ocean. But during normal gameplay circumstances, the effect is convincing nonetheless. What's less convincing are the little pools of water dotting the islands. 
Basic cube maps are employed here, leading to less realistic reflections. At least normal maps are used to provide a sense of interaction as you run across it. Of course, if all this water is the glue that holds the world together then, these islands are the substance which makes it all work. Rather than relying on procedural generation, Rare has handcrafted each island in the game, leading to plenty of variety as you explore its world. Dense foliage is placed across most of these islands, with blowing grass, palm trees, and bushes spilling out across your path. A lovely animation is used when characters collide with individual plants, further enhancing the sense of fluidity. Shadows are adjusted based on the position of the sun and nicely filtered for the most part, even casting realistically across bodies of water. The world is then further enhanced using an atmospheric haze, which gives the impression of light scattering, which rises and falls based on the current weather conditions. Speaking of lighting, the game world makes use of an accelerated real-time time of day system which makes lighting more challenging. To solve this problem, Rare opted to use light propagation volumes, or LPVs, a technique designed to enable a form of real-time global illumination which relies on lattices and spherical harmonics to represent bounce lighting across a scene. This was first pioneered by Crytek last generation, but was improved with DX11 and Compute Shaders by Lionhead for its cancelled Fable Legends game, another Unreal Engine 4 title. It's interesting then that Rare has adopted this approach, enabling realistic bounce lighting and occlusion across its world rather than relying on baked lighting to achieve similar results. What's especially fascinating here though is that you can almost see the LPVs drawing in based on proximity. Look at the shading across the roof of this cave as we move into the scene, for instance. Despite the noticeable draw-in that can pop up in some scenes though, this is an effective technique overall and greatly enhances the lighting and overall visual design of the world. Screen space crepuscular rays are also featured and applied to the sun, allowing beams to slice through certain scenes to dramatic effect. Caves and villages are filled with point lights, enabling some dramatic moments as well. Even these carefully placed candles are lit realistically, with the candlelight illuminating just the interior as it should. What's amazing about the locations that you visit along the way is how lacking in straight lines each one of them is. Virtually every edge of every object features undulation or variation in shape, lending them a more natural silhouette. While we're discussing the islands then, here's a quick side-by-side -side look at the game running on Xbox One X versus an Xbox One S. The primary difference here comes down to resolution and shadow map quality. Shadows and image quality are both blurrier on the S. Distant LODs are also ever so slightly improved on Xbox One X, with things like trees exhibiting improved ambient shadowing at a distance on the Xbox One X. The two look reasonably comparable at a glance, but when you're playing it on an actual TV, the lower resolution and slightly reduced detail levels on Xbox One S really stand out. Whether you're using a 1080p or 4K display, the Xbox One X exhibits dramatically improved overall image quality. It's still a great looking game either way, but if you have an Xbox One X, clearly that's the way to play it. But one feature that is equally high quality on both Xbox consoles is the sky. You spend a lot of time with a clear view of the sky in this game, thus it plays a very important role in the overall presentation. So what are they doing here? Cloud rendering is a difficult problem to solve. Some games take an expensive volumetric approach, while others resort to two-dimensional planes. Sea of Thieves, however, features a fully geometric cloud system. That's right, each cloud is built from a simple model that is manipulated in an off-screen buffer and then fed back into the main image, hence why we see some screen space artifacts here along the edge of the screen. The cloud models themselves are extremely simple, averaging around 850 vertices or so, and it is lit in a per-vertex fashion rather than per pixel, but the blurring and distortion performed off-screen allows them to appear soft and fluffy around the edges. The designers can then manipulate the shapes and types of clouds to create dramatic formations above the player. And while each individual model is opaque, the various blending and manipulations applied can allow various cloud layers to realistically and smoothly overlay one another. Then there's the objects populating the world, and perhaps the most important piece of this is the ship itself. 
you spend a lot of time on these vessels, and Rare has done a great job capturing the sense of sailing across the ocean on a large hunk of wood. As you glide across the water, the ropes sway, sails swoosh in the wind, lanterns rattle back and forth, and an impressive water shader allows the waves to wash over the deck, giving the impression of water filling the ship. When you take damage, parallax occlusion maps are even used to give depth to the splintered hull. Taken together, there's a real sense of heft to each vessel as a result of all these subtle animations. And all of this is enhanced by the use of sound. The sound of wood creaking, sails taking on wind, and water washing over the deck is handled superbly, and when a storm rolls in, the support for proper 7.1 audio really helps immerse you into the world. On the other hand, as impressive as the ship may be, the other living or undead creatures scattered about are perhaps less so. You'll face a lot of skeletons in this game, and they look great and animate fairly well, but there's sort of a disconnect inherent to combat that leaves these combat segments feeling somewhat unrefined and leggy. Still, despite these flaws, the overall experience is simply gorgeous to behold, and that beauty helps pull you into the game. Unfortunately, not everything is always rosy when it comes to networking and performance. In its current state, Sea of Thieves suffers from some noticeable performance problems, particularly on Xbox One X. It should be mentioned, however, that Rare itself has specifically addressed this in a video cast and is promising a patch next week, so do keep that in mind. We've seen some reported performance issues on the on the Xbox One X. Yep. Um, uh, we've identified these areas. Um, you know, it's in specific areas um, uh, in, in the game, and uh, we've got a series of fixes that have already kind of been they've been checked in. But again, this requires a client side update. But you might still be wondering what exactly needs patching here. Well, I found three key areas which exhibit noticeable screen tearing and slowdown on the Xbox One X. The first of which are the caves. Any sort of tunnels or cave system exhibit severe tearing on Xbox One X, and in fact increased GPU load on the PC, something Alex will discuss in his PC-focused video. It's a strange problem as there's no obvious cause for the performance problems in these caves. I mean, there are extra lights here, sure, but not a whole lot else going on. The next trouble spot can be found when swimming in small bodies of water or water near shore, particularly when a waterfall is visible. The situation causes similar dips to the caves and is at least partially caused by alpha transparencies. Similar dips can be observed when plumes of dust appear just after defeating enemies as well. Lastly, there are the larger outposts. Exploring this spot, for instance, is enough to introduce screen tearing and slowdown while simply walking around. You'll also see it inside certain buildings like the tavern at the beginning or just while exploring the outpost itself. Aside from these trouble spots, however, the performance is generally stable. While sailing the seas with beautiful water and clouds in full view, we rarely encountered any drops as a result of the system. There's occasional network skips and stutters here and there, but tearing is extremely uncommon on the ocean. It's the same when exploring most islands as well. Slowdown and tearing really isn't much of a problem. Thus, we're hopeful that with the upcoming patch next week, Rare can address the problem observed in caves, watery areas, and in town. Then we have the Xbox One S, which manages to turn in slightly faster performance overall. You'll still run into some noticeable tearing around things like waterfalls with alpha transparency and in certain other trouble spots, but in general, it's really not bad. This is likely due to the massive resolution differential here. In the past, Xbox One games running at 1080p could easily jump up to native 4K on the X, while 900p games typically aim for 1800p or dynamic resolution, so the leap in this case from 900p to 4K is pretty significant. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait until next week to see how the game fares after its first patch, but for now, it's simply okay, but not exceptional. Now, the 30 FPS frame rate of the game could have been enhanced further, though, if object and camera motion blur had remained active. You see, in the earliest revealed trailer for the game, you can actually see this in action. Smooth motion blur is fully engaged in this trailer, and it looks really nice. 
We also spotted higher resolution shadow maps in this early trailer, but hey, it was pre-release, right? Motion Blur is a common Unreal Engine feature though, and it's disappointing that the developers don't offer it in the options menu. So if anyone from the tech team is watching this at Rare, maybe you can hide the option to enable Motion Blur in a treasure chest or something, that would be pretty fun, right? Of course, Motion Blur has its own performance penalty, so perhaps it's not viable here, but it would be an awesome addition if possible. There is another issue I wanted to mention then, and that is related to networking. During the first couple of days, I regularly encountered what is known as a cyan beard error, which suggests that there's a network problem, even though I remain connected to my Xbox Live party. It's an issue I haven't run into with any other Xbox Live games, but here I was disconnected basically every 20 minutes, like clockwork. I saw some mentions online suggesting that disabling IP version 6 would improve the situation, but it seemed kind of unlikely to me. Well, after running out of options, I did disable it on my router, and sure enough, the problem was eliminated entirely, and I could play for hours without an issue. If I re-enable IPv6, however, the issue returns in full force. This really shouldn't be necessary, but for those encountering a similar problem, it's certainly worth a try. Overall then, I've walked away from Sea of Thieves rather impressed with what Rare has constructed. It's an atypical multiplayer experience. There's no leveling up, and the only difference between a seasoned player and a new one is actual experience. This isn't your typical cynical, loot-filled open world game. It feels like an honest attempt to create a fun adventure that you can have with your friends. And the underlying tech helps make that possible. The types of encounters you'll run into and the ability to coexist in this weird, crazy world is just awesome. It almost calls to mind the type of multiplayer experience I had in the past with Journey which is a very good thing indeed. But if you're someone that demands an endless list of things to do and loot around every corner, it's a bit of a tough sell, but if you approach it with an open mind and go in expecting something a little different, there's a lot to love here. It'll certainly be interesting to see how the game fares going forward. That's all from me for now though. If you enjoyed this lighthearted look at Sea of Thieves, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter to see more. And until next time, this is Captain John signing off.